Die, monster! You don't belong in this world. It was not by my hand I was once again given flesh. I was brought here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? Think a miserable pile of secrets. But enough talk. Have at you in the buds busting balls. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And we are going to kick this thing off the right way. Why did I go and quote Castlevania? I don't know. I felt like it. I felt really uh, loose and free for me with things tonight. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be doing a real free-form conversation. If something pops into our brains, we're just going to say it, and you're going to listen. That's right. You can't stop this video. You're going to have to listen to it all the way through. But before we get into that little introduction, I am the one and only, and thank God the only, because I don't think the world can take more of me, Hero Mega Man X, Scotty Porta Potty, the one, the only. Oh, we already established that. <clears throat> As for these next two. I'm going to have to get into character, be a little topical right now for the news. A little person that you haven't heard from lately, but you're probably going to start hearing about him a lot more now. <clears throat> I am here to make the Buds Busting Balls podcast great again. That's right. MABBA. Right here, we got Bauer Tendo. That's right. Or as I like to refer to him is Manic Mike. Because he's always going around changing his mind about things, everybody. And don't even get me started on this other one over here. That's right, Celiac Matt, a.k.a. Comrade Worsham, going around with his socialist policies, trying to ruin this great country. But I won't let him, because I am going to make Buds Busting Balls great again. That said, what are the buds drinking tonight? <laughs> okay. One, I, I'm looking forward to where Mike puts the theme song in all of that. Uh, two, my favorite part from your Castlevania speech was none of the words. It was you doing a sound effect. You went like, blink. <laughs> you, did like, <laughs> you just made a sound effect noise. Like somebody was putting something down is what it sounded like to me. That was my Wait, favorite what? part. That's what it sounded like. You're just doing sound like effects the whole over thing? there. No, one thing? of it, no, like no, like during the part. speech. That was, that, was, that just, was the glass breaking. Yeah, that was my best yeah, like yeah. breaking glass noise. Yeah, that was completely unnecessary, and it was my favorite part. No, no, it. that's the most important part of the entire thing is when he throws the glass. I just like that your glass breaking was blink, <laughs> not. Psh. Yeah, like psh would that have been a lot better. Game. That's how it sounds in the game, all right? I'm trying to be authentic to the game experience. Okay, that's yeah, just as authentic as that Donald Trump impression was. Got it. How dare yeah. you insult my Donald Trump impression? So, so you started off like the accent, whatever, it's not there. Then he kind of picked up the inflection. Can he kind of like, I talk like this? Like he has to like kind of pause he when he says things. You started using your hands. You got to use your hands. Works. That's how you sell it. It's like, mm -hmm. I am Donald Trump and I think Fortnite is a terrible game. Man, Something that's a like shitty that. Donald Trump. I'm sorry. Listen, I can't do accents. I can do an right, audible right, right. but that's it. Okay, we're going to let the people vote. That's right. Now this is going to be a poll. Mike, oh, do your Trump. Fake news. All of it. Fake news. I think Mike just won. No, 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 no. I, see, I have to I, talk I for Mike like Trump. 10 minutes, and then it's then I win, right? <laughs> you got to warm up. Yeah. Get into it. All right, all right, all right. I'll start. I'll start. What I am drinking today is a Sprite. I have not had a Sprite in a long time. And Scott and I were talking about this earlier. Sprite has changed their branding. And I don't know when they changed it, but it used to be like, you know, green sort of lime, funny looking liquid. Now it's clear. And I think this is an agenda where they're like, listen, if the soda's clear, it must be healthier for you. I love Sprite. It tastes the same, but I don't like that it's like clear now. Like it Sprite? used to be an actual like kind of color. Now it's just it looks like water, but it's, I think no, you guys it's are always crazy. been clear. Sprite has no, always been clear. The bottle oh. has been green, but the actual Sprite itself has always been clear. Oh, you mean the That's bottle? That's sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. the bottle. I, I, I goofed on that one. The bottle uh, used to be like green, but now like it's like clear. Like, is this water? No, it is Sprite. Uh, it will like, give I was you gonna cancer. Say, like that. I like me and you are drinking you, very I think somebody different Somebody was making you drink piss. Uh, I, who would do I, something like that? What psycho would I, make people drink 
pee. Wow. I will I will not elaborate, but I have gotten someone to drink pee before. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but it, I did do that. Was mm-hmm. it Christian? No, no, it was it was no one you guys knew. Someone oh, okay. I went to school with. Um, anywho, we don't need to talk without. Anywho, Sprite, <laughs> delicious, not healthy. That's okay. Not healthy things are okay. Uh, I am. Matt's gonna like this. I found one. I found one yes. that I legitimately like. Liquid death. Li- liquid death. The severed Let's lime go. is actually really good. It's really good. It's really tasty. It's kind of in the same vein as your sprite, actually. I guess a little bit there, huh? Um, but yeah, it's really good. I'm drinking. I'm drinking some liquid death, and I'm not gonna talk about my games because we're we've got a plenty of game talk to talk about tonight. So Scott, what are you drinking? As for me, I am drinking a Remedy. I don't even know why I'm showing the camera because we're doing audio only now. But I have a Remedy kombucha right now. Pretty good. It's from Australia, mate. So, you know, put a little shrimp on the Barbie and all that. But uh, right here, this is the mixed berry flavor. Really enjoying these ones. They're not, like, super sugary, but they still taste sweet enough to, like, I don't know, hit the spot. Okay. All right. Them's the drinks. I like that nobody drinks. We don't drink alcohol anymore. We're trying to be healthy by drinking Sprite instead. Yes. (laughs) All right. All right. Here's something I want to talk about, guys. Uh, In my Discord earlier, someone was uh, asking, like, some folks, like, hey, uh, I'm going to get, like, a a new system. Uh, I'm debating between the newest Xbox or the PS5. So that had some back and forth with some folks in my Discord. And it kind of got me thinking. I'm like, I understand preferences. I just can't see somebody choosing the Xbox over the PS5 unless you have like, no, you don't have a PC. It kind of makes sense because if you have a PC, I don't think there's really a point in an Xbox, but we were talking about the exclusives. Cause to me, I think that that is what is a, a system seller it is not necessarily the hardware as proven by the switch, even though I guess you could say the handheld hardware is part of its gimmick. It's, it's the games. I just feel PS5 has the better exclusives. So just hard for me, and this might make people angry, to like, if you have to choose between the two, why why Xbox over PS5? And what I asked about, like, the games, first he said, I don't really care about the exclusives for the PS5. And then he went on to talk about the exclusives on the Xbox he wants. And the two games he listed, I don't even remember what they are, but one was, like, Slime Rancher 2. I was like... Well, that's not an exclusive. Okay. That's on the and Switch. I was thinking, that's on uh, PC. Uh, that's... That's interesting. Right. And okay. then he listed another game that's just like, this This is on other platforms. But I wasn't going to like go after it because you, you can go after what, what you want. Yeah. I just think the PS5 is the better system from a controller standpoint and from an exclusive standpoint. I know people won't agree with me on that one, but I just think PS5 is a much better purchase, especially if you have a PC. So All right. I was musing about that today. I am in a very unique spot where I have been uh, Xbox. What is it? Xbone? But like, what, what's the name for my group? I think it's X-Bot. X-Bot. Yeah, you had it right it's the first X-Bot. time. X-Bot. It's X-Bot. All right. Most of my, like, probably most of the last 15 years, I've just been all Xbox. And then it was only until, like, two years ago I got PlayStation 5. And I love the PlayStation 5 and all these different PlayStation exclusives that I always said all this time, like, I don't care about. Playing them, I'm like, wow, I care about these. Like, God of War and The uh, Last of Us, these are, like, some of my favorite games now. With that said, as a person who uses both controllers a lot, the PlayStation one feels more premium, but the Xbox one just feels right. It just feels good. It feels great as far as like ergonomics go. And I don't know. I'm going to give it to the Xbox controller. And I guess it just comes down to, is it somebody who's interested in catching up on a big backlog of games? Or is it somebody who's being more like forward thinking? Because honestly, at this point, there's like so much good stuff on PlayStation that you can play, in my opinion, more than the Xbox. But I'm telling you, I really think xbox is going to be the way to go in the upcoming years with them their buying spree that they have been on owning a little company now called activision blizzard bethesda like i don't know i you just look at that spider-man leak which again it was pretty shitty what happened thank you for, Studios, I guess that was but, what i was gonna bring up exactly but if you thank look you. behind the scenes it kind of paints a picture of a major game company like not just talking about insomniac but sony as a whole that I think is starting to crumble under the weight of itself. And I don't think it's on a very sustainable path. Whereas Microsoft, Microsoft can throw money. They can burn money all day long. They can go and use, you know, 
use money to go and keep all their houses lit up the fireplaces for years and years and years they they don't care about it i mean they care about making money but at the same time like if a studio like redfall what is it, arcane whatever fails all right we won't close you down we'll give you another shot i don't know if something if like the next god of war was a huge dud for playstation though i don't know if like they would be able to really recover that well, especially with the enormous fortunes they're sinking into all these different AAA games. But mm. uh, that's enough for me. But well, the I other thing think... too that I wanted to bring up is the pipeline. Like you kind of alluded to that, that Insomniac leak uh, really brought up something that all of us kind of, uh, not just us, but like a lot of people kind of like had an inkling. Like I think it costs way too much to make these games, and it <laughs> takes way too long. Remember when game like I remember talking with my brother in law and he looked at me one day and he went, I remember when games used to release. And if I sat back and I thought about it for a second, I was like, what does he mean? And then I kind of thought about it and I went, oh, yeah, these games are taking so long to make and so much money to make. <clears throat> Last year, how many PS5 exclusives did we get? How many? Do you remember Seven. how many? How I, many? I don't know, dude. No Sp <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. Uh, Final Fantasy 16. And I think we had maybe one more. I might be forgetting. Okay? Final Fantasy 16 did okay. But now, the it's already... The producer... What's it? Uh, Yoshi P is already talking about the next one. And already talking about, like, oh, I think I want to do this. And, like... He's already looking to the next one. That just came out. Not knocking the game at all. But it didn't sell Final Fantasy numbers. That's like if Tears of the Kingdom had come out and it sold less than Breath of the Wild, where you'd go, I mean, it's not bad, but that's not what you were expecting with the money you put into it, right? Spider-Man 2 did just fine. Just fine. But, again, they put so much time and money into that. What does PlayStation have that we know of this year? an inkling of <clears throat> you're gonna you're gonna bet on foam stars oh, i forgot that game was still coming it, and it's coming to ps <laughs> plus it's not I even forgot. a buy it game so I that's forgot. so like that's my point is that i feel like sony kind of blew their load and they got a little cocky because they were so far ahead of microsoft and the xbox with just about everything and Microsoft has had missteps, but now they have, like Scott said, they have the money to burn because of non-game stuff. <laughs> Sony yeah. doesn't have that. And so they can throw it out there. So Arcane, Redfall sucked. Sucked. But guess what they're doing next? They're making a damn Blade game. That's cool. A Blade that game? does sound sick. A Blade game sounds awesome. That is, Done that, by that Arcane? Cool. That could be like a kill blow like that could be a death blow right there that is crazy cool they have all of these other games coming and i have a feeling that it in this lull with playstation xbox is going to make up some ground now again so the ps5 as far as games go i guess you'd call it superior it has the exclusives but i have to agree with scott too this controller I use this control. This is the one that came with my Series X. I use that for my PC. I got a yellow one for myself with my Xbox. I wanted to ask about the controller because, like, here's what I bought. So you guys can't see this on podcast. That's land, literally the same one that I have. Okay, I hate this controller. Wow. I hate this controller. I it's it's maybe because I've been so like Stockholm syndrome with the way a PlayStation controller is. Because I was a PS4 guy. I was a 360 guy. Then a PS4 guy, now a PS5. You like guy. where That's the sticks of, are, don't you? I like where the sticks are. Like it, it's I it. I hate that it, on the PS5 controller. <laughs> I, I, I hate love it, it too. I, I love it, I and just sticks. like the feedback I get for the controller, it feels like I don't know. It just feels awkward to me. So maybe it's just because I'm used to a certain type of controller. So I use this controller more now than I used to because I'm playing more games on Steam, and I still prefer a controller over mouse and keyboard when I can get away with it. So I'm playing games like Dark Tide with this, Undertale, and it just feels so like clunky using this controller. And I can't really explain it more than that, but I don't like where the sticks are. And it could be because I'm so used to a PS5 controller or the PlayStation setup. 
I, I just think the PS5 controller is vastly superior with like the haptic feedback. It, it weighs a ton. It's the heaviest standard controller known to man. The battery will die in a day. Um, definitely has some flaws, but from an actual delivery standpoint, I freaking love that controller versus this thing, which feels like, I don't know, just feels clunky. This feels like a toy to me. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've been, uh, I've been groomed by the PlayStation and, and their nice controller. I, I do like what you guys are saying about upcoming games. While you're talking about that, I looked at a upcoming exclusive PlayStation games and games that are confirmed. Are you excited for, for Helldivers 2? I was just about to say, confirmed for this one. I'm scrolling through like a top 10 list. Confirmed uh, coming, or at least should be. There's some game called Stellar Blade. I don't know what that is. Uh, there's one good. called Pacific. There's one called Pacific Drive. I don't know what that what that is either. Uh, Foam Stars, whatever Hell Divers is. I'm like, man, I don't know most of these. Uh, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is coming out. That will make some money, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I think the one really concern, like very telling for Sony and their position. Do you guys know off the top of your head what is the most expensive acquisition Sony has done? It was freaking Bungie. It was Bungie. Do you know what's going on over in Bungie? It's it's the dog. It's the meme. The dog sitting so there with the fire around him saying, this is fine. They literally have a contract. Bungie, when they got bought out by Sony, they still wanted their independence. And it's some type of money. I forget the terms of it, but basically they have to make a certain amount of money. And if they don't make it for like a particular business year, then Sony has the permission, can basically go and completely liquidate the board, fire everybody in charge management-wise, and then they go and take over everything and run it themselves. So I don't know the name of it, but Bungie has a pretty big expansion coming out for Destiny 2. This is like a life or death expansion. And a lot of people are predicting that like this, like basically it has to make a crazy amount of money. And if it does not make this certain amount of money, then they are going to either the management is going to be completely fired and Sony takes over or what they're saying is more likely they're going to be completely liquidated by Sony. And uh, that's, not a good spot to be in with your most expensive acquisition of all time. Meanwhile, not saying that, uh, you know, all these studios Microsoft bought are producing like super amazing hits either, but I don't know. I don't hear much talk about Microsoft liquidating the board or the management of these companies or liquidating the companies in general. I do remember those- though, like they, they got a lot of heat for, act, you know, getting a bunch of studios that then flopped. And what was that game you mentioned earlier? Red? Fall or something like that. But that Red was Fall. by Arcane, which is that they had Bart? a good pedigree. Right. That. And basically what Microsoft said more or less after that is like, okay, this was a flop. We're going to now be a little bit more involved from that one, not burn it to the ground, be more involved. Yeah. And I'm very removed from like a lot of like the corporate stuff when it comes to gaming. Cause basically if it makes it to the headline, something bad is happening. I get that. Uh, but purely from a game standpoint, if we're talking like, I guess I can't talk about future exclusives, but current and past, I do st- just to go back to my original point. I think this PlayStation has the better backlog and catalog. Um, but that's a really good point. Like what's coming up is like, oh, all right. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that backlog right. and catalog, which you are right about the exclusives. You're right. But you have to pay for every damn one of those. Right now with my Series X, like Red Dead Redemption. I can go take Red Dead Redemption, my Xbox 360 version, pop it into the Series X, and not only does it just play, I don't have to buy it again, it just plays my physical disc, it's better. It is 4K, I believe they updated it to 4K60. For I don't pay anything. I literally just pop it into my Series X and go. The PlayStation does that too. I mean, I haven't gone past no, the ps3 era but all of my previous like physical ps4 yes you not. cannot none of, so you're and, saying and X, even, xbox will pull back from the 360 xbox and will does pull it, back even from the xbox dude yeah i want to that I, I don't doubt it i just didn't know that and i think that's hilarious I, i'm picturing someone putting halo one into their newest xbox can, and i think that's the funniest done, thing yeah it, I, I mean, it's not all xbox game it's not yeah. all xbox it's, games it's a large is, chunk but not all yeah yes it is and possible. PlayStation doesn't do that with PS3 at all? Like there's Not no or PS2 games? or PS1. You have to buy the subscription to play those games and that back catalog. I own it. I have the PS Plus for other reasons too. And I, let me tell you, it's not a good deal. And this is crazy. 
I think that NSO plus the expansion pack is a better deal than the PS Plus stuff they give you now. Like, it's cheaper. The game catalog is now finally where it should be. It's not – it could be better, but it's it's just – it's amazing to me. So it's like Xbox has a lot of things going for it now, but they need to capitalize on that. What they need to do, drop their Series X price. They can throw money, okay, to get back in the game. Drop it like a solid 100 bucks. Make the Series X 100 bucks cheaper. I guarantee you people will be like, well, it doesn't have the exclusives, but all of my third, my modern, like my Call of Duties, you know, the, I'm thinking of the mainstream, the people that just buy games. They don't talk about games like this, right? Oh, I can play my Call of Duty on it. And it's cheaper. It's $100 cheaper than a PS5. Okay, cool. Well, maybe I'll get a PS5 later. This is, I can get it right now. Or I already got a PS5. Hey, that's way cheaper. I'm going to play my third party. And honestly, a lot of my third party games, I like to play on my Xbox instead. Or on, you know, usually they, they come to Game Pass. That's the yeah, other yeah, big, big we, thing. We, yeah, we don't need to talk about Game Pass. I we get won't, it. You, you, we you, won't hound you, on that. Yes. You don't need to hound that. All right. That was interesting. So obviously, I'm a PS5 guy, and I don't really have that big of a, what is it, the horse in the race? That's the phrase, I guess. Uh, I just, someone brought it up today and I started thinking about it. I'm like, oh, I wonder what the buds think. Cause basically I'm like, I like the PS5 controller. I like the games that I have as everyone that's listening to this knows I don't replay a lot of games. So the appeal of pulling in your Xbox one, like original Xbox and 360 games into your newest Xbox, that's rad. That's a feature I did not know even existed. So that was fun. I, I'm not going to make the argument that PS5 is better, even though that's my preference. I just thought it'd be a fun conversation. And look at that. I learned a lot. One, that PS5 has crap and upcoming exclusives. That's fun. Uh, but two, just knowing you can put in a Halo 1 disc into your Xbox, that's rad. I hate their controller still. I, I hate this controller still. But that's pretty cool. I'll digress from that one. Uh, what other gaming thoughts do you guys have, unless you have some closing thoughts you really feel you got to hammer home? Here. I mean, we're t so we're talking about all, all these the consoles, the current gen consoles, right? Let's talk about something that really this might surprise you. I am so over it. I'm so pissed off about it, and here we are going to talk about it. Switch two and the Switch two rumors. Look, I want to switch two. I love my Switch. Everybody needs to chill the hell out about this thing. Just when it comes, it comes. We know games are coming. We're going to get a Mario. We're going to get these awesome games. Chill the hell out. And now the latest discourse is, oh, it's only going to be PS4 level quality. Uh, let me type on my keyboard. And I think to myself, okay, well, let's, let's step back and look. The idea of playing a game like, I don't know, God of War or God of War Ragnarok, that level, okay, that level of fidelity. Mind you, it's a PS4 version, but that was still damn impressive. Do you remember what God of War played like on the PS4? The actual Pretty game? Good. I'm not talking about your fan and the PS4 taking off like a jet <laughs> engine. I'm talking about the game itself. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, was, it was beautiful. Uncharted it was beautiful. 4. Yeah. The Last of Us remastered. The, the Last of Us on the PS3. Imagine that, but completely portable. And not a giant, crazy Steam fan that you have on the deck <laughs> that once it starts going, you can't hear anything. You have to wear headphones, right? I, on, on the Steam Deck note, uh, I've never noticed the fan until like, oh, my wife's kind of fallen asleep next to me in bed. So I'm going to turn down like the volume. And then it goes from like just what I thought was ambient noise to like, <laughs> and it's not as loud. I, mine's probably not as loud as yours because I think it varies from hardware to hardware, unfortunately. Uh, that fan is is pretty beefy. That so much that I'm like, I want to put up the audio just a little bit more. So it's not it's only noticeable when I turn like the volume all the way down. I'm like, that is a loud fan. Ooh. What I would also like you to test out one of these days. So you you also play kind of smaller games on the deck, right? Like not not the I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, the most the most in games the most intensive. The is probably hi-fi rush is the most intensive i play on the the steam deck yeah so th as soon as you play one of those big games man the battery life goes up, just down the tube and that fan kicks on to turbo and i understand why it needs to 
but you don't realize how big of a deal that is until you're playing like you said you're playing and then you're like i can't hear a damn thing i have to i have to wear headphones because i can't turn it up (laughs) yeah i my my steam deck's not that bad i have some thoughts on the steam deck i I was actually going to bring up a little bit later let's get back to the switch too i I do want to jump in on, on your argument real quick is i think there is a lot of validity to those that want to see a very very decent upscale in what the switch is delivering or can deliver and if it can achieve ps4 like graphics god of war you know what cool i'm sold for those that play portable i hate playing my switch in portable now because almost every game i play to me it is such a noticeable downgrade either in just what i'm seeing on the screen or just the controller I don't like playing on it in handheld unless I'm playing the more chill game. They games. need to fix the controller. They need to fix yes. the Joy-Con. They, they, it needs yes. to be thicker or just don't detach them. Maybe the Switch 2 is just like a solid unit that you can dock, but you just pull it out. Like there's there's not another controller, right? I did find a workaway. My friend is a 3D printer, so he did this thing where like my Switch like slides into it and it gives these like back grips. I know they make official yeah. ones, but just knowing my friend... 3D printed, like, here, this is for your Switch. I'm like, oh, I can kind of play Splatoon now uh, in handheld mode with that, which is pretty cool. So They got, they got ex- really good ones out there, too, that, like, have That's the what Rumble, have the HD Rumble, have all the other stuff, and they're not expensive now. So I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't have to pay for that. But my point in all this is not, like, look, Switch 2, you want it, don't, whatever, right? Like, we all want a bigger, better Switch 2. That's what we want, okay? We don't want some weird, wacky gimmick, Nintendo. We don't want anything crazy. Just beef it up fix your controller, you're good. And put a Mario on it at launch. And guess what? You're going to sell like gangbusters, just like the Switch did. Ooh, I will also have one. Also have decent internet, like better. Like this is the best internet service that they've had. And I know a lot of it is. But uh, I, I would love uh, to have actually decent internet, not yes. have to worry. Like, but, like I want to play my Smash Brothers online with items without worrying about a lag fest. Yes. Things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, they could do those little tweaks, and they've got one of the best systems ever, right? Easy, okay? I don't care about that. It's just, why is everybody talking about... This has literally been talked about since one year after the Switch launch in 2018. Oh, it's Switch Pro. Oh, it's Switch this one. Oh, it's that one. Oh, it's this one. And I'm just like, guys, play the games or don't play the games. Move along or just play your Switch. It will come when it comes. And I don't, maybe you guys can offer some light on this. I don't really see this with the next Xbox or the next PlayStation until it's like within months, like six, seven, eight months when it's like, oh, it's coming. And then everybody starts talking, right? Why are Nintendo fans like this? Or I guess not even Nintendo. Why are people like this and talking about this? The Switch yeah, too, like it's this. It's more like, noticeable. It's more noticeable the difference that, like, because Xbox and PlayStation are so far ahead, like, graphically, uh, at least what people are expecting, than the Switch. Like, I understand the argument of, like, you go into a handheld mode, like, it's a console game button handheld. That's pretty cool. That's still a feat, right? Yeah. But it's such a dramatic difference between the two that, like, there are some really cool games that, the only way to get it on the Switch is to like super modify it. And there have been some good ones. Uh, a lot of studios have brought like like Doom, for example. Like I I, I haven't played it on Switch, but Doom, I've, I've oh, heard great. good things about. You've talked about other games that they have basically somehow toned down without feeling like it loses a lot of its fidelity. I get that, but it just seems like a lot of work. Like, hey, we're going to pay this whole studio to work a whole year to make this game work <laughs> on our console. So uh, I think it's just because it's a, just a stark difference. And it's always easy to hate on Nintendo. Like, it's a baby system. That's a game for babies. They yeah. play baby games, but we all know that's not true. Like, there's great games. They're just not, you know, murder, murder, kill, kill, Call of Duty. And stuff like that. I think that's the biggest reason why. How many more games Scott like Hi-Fi Rush, bit. really? Hi-Fi Rush, I think, would look good on the Switch with this style. Well, you um, heard the rumor that, it that it's coming to the Switch, right? Uh, no, and but CFDs, hopefully it's good. Apparently. See if these would be interesting. I want to play that in the Steam Deck. I'll be streaming see if these for the first time in a while on Thursday. But I do want to get Scott's thoughts. Do you have any thoughts on a uh, Switch Two Angry People? Not at all. I'm honest. It's <laughs> like Mike saying how like everybody's talking about it. I haven't heard anybody talk about it. Oh, but again, bless, I don't know. You are blessed, my friend. Maybe it, maybe I'm in the right areas or wrong areas, depending how you look about it. And even my personal thoughts, 
I don't know when it comes. I didn't buy the Switch at launch. I, I bought it like a year or two after it came out. I was one of those weird people who bought Breath of the Wild for the Wii U and played it on that. <laughs> when the Switch Two comes out, like if I can, when I get to the point where I can just walk into any Target and it's there and I can just buy it, I'm like, okay, that looks cool. Bye. If I have to go fight for anything, you know, being virtual online queues or stock websites or put any effort at all into buying something, I don't do it. And I'm sure that'll probably be the case with the Switch too. So yeah, I'm not. When it comes, cool. Hopefully it has some good exclusives. Hopefully they don't add some dumb gimmick. But I I Man, not I don't really care all that much. To I, be I was ready to ask Scott, like based on what he said, I was ready to ask Scott, Scott, when's the last time you actually played the Switch, let alone in handheld? But I think you just answered the question where you're just like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I have Super Mario RPG, got it for Christmas, and yeah, I like, haven't got around to it yet, and with everything else I have in my backlog, it might be a while, and yeah, I'm going to be honest, not a huge Switch player, probably the only game I played on it last year was, uh, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, granted I did play a shitload of that game, but yeah, I mean, not the biggest player. Did you play it handheld? Did you play any of that in handheld? I played a bit of it in handheld, so... Yeah. Usually, I will never play the Switch handheld traveling because I just I feel sketched out about bringing stuff like that with me on the road. If I am playing in handheld, I'm at home, but then I'm watching television or I'm mostly playing the game and then have the television on in the background. There's some weird people who will just like sit down on the recliner and play handheld and have nothing else going on. All their attention is on the handheld. I think you people, you're very weird. You're, you're, you're bizarre. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I don't right. know any justification playing handheld unless you're on the go or you have something else going on. Whatever. And at this point, if I'm on the go, I'd rather play Marvel Snap. There's your Marvel Snap plug for oh, the week, everybody. Is. We love Marvel Snap. <laughs> Not All right. me. My, Mike, unless you have some more angry thoughts on the Switch, I'm actually curious on Scott's uh, Last of Us update. No, I just wanted to yell about the stupid Switch 2 <laughs> stuff. And I'm I'm yeah. actually with Scott. I'm going to try to get a Switch 2 when it comes out. But if it's a fight, I'm going to just go... This this whole garbage with the Series X and the PS5 and the graphics cards, that just... I just went... If I can't walk into a store and get it, screw it. I'll plus, get it eventually. Plus, you have that weird superpower where, like, you just know when there's, like, you can catch something. That's true. That's how... You've gotten, like, three or four people, like, a PS5 or a high-end, yeah. hard-to-get console. Because I remember I was messaging you, like, hey... I'm ready to buy a PS5. You're like, all right, I'll let you know. And then like two days later, you're like, Matt, here it is. And then you like, you found it. It was from Sony Direct. I acted immediately. I'm like, thanks, Mike. What a weird superpower that you have that you I can got, find it. I think Go I got it. Scott as Xbox, you didn't got me. I? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, that's how I got my Xbox Series X. And it's funny, I actually just finally paid it off last month. Talk about useless superpowers that really come in clutch. <laughs> Whatever, I'll take it, I guess. I'll take it. Maybe that'll happen for the Switch 2 and any other ones, right? Where I'm just like, I one day I wake up and I'm like, to. it's going on order. I better go get it. You're gonna wake Part up of the worst the Avengers team ever. <laughs> it's a superpower. People better like, be thankful I'm not a fucking resale, reseller. One of those scumbags is just, oh, it's coming. Let me buy 10 of them and let me sell them for three times the price to you, baby. Those scumbags. Yeah, you, you, You'd be a good scumbag if you really wanted to. All right, Scott, I want to know about Last of Us. Um, we chatted a little bit about Discord. Uh, where, where, where are you right now with Last of Us? Hey, did right. you meet the it's brothers? Big, uh, I, I did. Okay, so one thing, I think I mentioned this during the last podcast, and I will repeat it now. I've almost 100% guessed everybody who dies, including the brothers. But the thing that the game does really well, and it continued to do well, is I... Definitely don't expect the people to die the way they've ended up dying. And the brothers, that was that was rough. But honestly, I think the roughest thing about it, I think it was really shitty on the way out how I think his name was Henry, and he blamed it all on Joel. That one I'm still trying to like mentally process. Like, how, how do you pin that on him? But that was a very rough moment. The most minor of gripes, though, and I'm not sure if any of you guys noticed this or if they changed it with the remake, it literally turns to black for a whole minute before the game continues. And I'm not going to lie. There's a good 15 seconds where I was just like, damn. All right, let's keep playing. And it just stays black. And it stays black. And I got to the point where I'm like, did, did my PS5 spaz out or something? 
And then finally letters pop on the screen saying like fall. And then it goes and cuts into the next scene you're in. But it was an oddly long amount of time, like awkwardly long. I think your so, PS5 might have, or it might have been loading because it was not that long in the I, original. It paused. For, it like was you like said, a like minute long, to twenty seconds, and then some light. If I remember correctly, light music kicks in, and then the letters, and then it moves on. It was kind of awkward. So with that said, <laughs> okay. Before I get into this, I'm still gonna say like so far this game is on track to being one of my favorite games of all time. But definitely my gaming sessions over the past week, they've been a little bit more of like, all right, now there's things in this game where I not, I, I think they could have did without that. The first is I went through the entire university section. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was a filler section. I really don't feel like there was much that was contributed to the story of like, hey, let's try to find these guys. Oh, these guys aren't here. All right, where did they go? They went here. Let's leave. That, oh, that getting... was definitely more of a set piece than anything, but it, to me, it was a really, really cool set piece because that's where eventually you see like the zoo animals, right? Like there's that that kind of like shot where it pulls back and you see like a giraffe just walking across like the university that, that, grounds. Uh, if there was a it giraffe, might... it was not in this. Ver there was monkeys, and yeah. I find it kind of funny that the whole cause of the outbreak there was because of these stupid monkeys that the entire time you fought were like really cute and like, oh look, it's the monkeys. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't. There was a giraffe. Am I making this up, Mike? Am I losing my mind? I thought there was a giraffe in that game at one point. Yeah, well, I, I, maybe now it's... I'm like, did they change something for the remake? I hope there not. Def... The if there was a giraffe, the if there was a giraffe at the university section, they definitely did not yeah. emphasize it. I can tell you, he... oh, yeah, so hold on a sec here, Scott. Uh... All right, dramatic pause. I don't know. Also, I think the took well, it out. Well, while he's looking it up, was that the set piece where you have to like you fall down like an elevator shaft and you kind of go through like the water bits on the bottom? Uh, that definitely did not happen in the university section. Yeah, and you can see the university the the thing in the back there. Um, yeah, well, she like on, kind of pets the giraffe. It might not be uh, in the university section. Continue uh -oh. on. I'm trying to remember where. Anyhow, it's at. I remember that scene though. <laughs> What you're talking about, Matt, that was quite a bit earlier. That was in the hotel, and I did oh, get a pretty yeah. good scare. I mean, I again, I knew it was going to happen. The elevator was going to break. I was going to fall down, but I think that was, like, the spookiest the game got. That was the you're... hardest for me from, like, a spooky standpoint. I was like, I yeah. don't like this at all. Yeah, one point that really got me is, as you're like, I'm, I'm already creeping around because I'm just like, all right, I know there's bad stuff down here, and then there's a point where you get swarmed by a bunch of rats, but they don't care about you. They're just running away from something and then they run all past you my first thought was like what were those rats running from but that part was a spoopy but anyway university section wasn't super big on it and then the following section of having to go and hunt the deer i also kind of didn't like that part with that said it only took me 10 minutes to complete unlike <laughs> I was gonna say, for posterity, though, how long did it take you to do it it took me 10 minutes. So the funny thing is, I like basically, you have to hit the deer twice. I basically immediately hit the deer the first time and it got me a little bit cocky. And I think that's why it took me 10 minutes to get him the second try. But uh, yeah, that part kind of annoyed me slightly as well. But I will still, overall, I am loving the game. University level felt like filler. Deer part was a little bit annoying, but you know, apparently not as annoying as it was for Matt. But those are everybody's uh last of us updates for this week more to come next week so those little gripes that you have and all those little things mm -hmm. you're like that wasn't that great that felt like filler the show fixes that just saying <laughs> so we we have matt with his constant marvel snap pimping, thing and then you have and Mike i'm gonna i'm gonna be the show for the show thing. yes absolutely and i was like a big mm -hmm. hater you can ask my wife i was like I don't want to watch this. Why do I? Why did they need to make this into a film or a show? Why did they need to do this? And then I watched it, and I was like, "That's why." Got it. Okay, understand. I understand now. All right, play Marvel Snap and watch The Last of Us, a TV show. Got it. Hey, I want to talk about the Steam Deck. Do all. Play the game. That's it. You have enough time to do all that. I want. I want to talk about the Steam Deck. I've been playing the Steam Deck quite a bit. More accurately, it's my my wife's Steam Deck. And on the Steam Deck, I've been playing Hype by Rush. I've been playing Monster Train. And those are the two biggest games I've been playing. Uh, Monster Train is kind of like Slay the Spire, deck building game. A lot of fun. I really, really enjoy it. Hype by Rush, I am really, really vibing with. Um, it, it's, it's weird. I feel I would enjoy it on a console more than the handheld. 
just because some of the movement still feels a little clunky, but uh, the Steam Deck to play full-on PC games, at least the highest level of Steam game I played is Hi-Fi Rush. It runs flawlessly. It sounds great. I don't notice the fan unless I turn the volume all the way down. Um, it's just such a stylish game. And I know Mike's played it. Scott, I don't think you've played it, even though it is on Game Pass. Um, Hi-Fi Rush is phenomenal. What a fun neat game that i am absolutely vibing with it has charm it's funny it's irreverent uh it's definitely would be scott's jam but i've been really enjoying playing that on the steam deck alongside monster train i basically play the steam deck pretty much every night now like i go lay in bed next to my wife and just play some steam deck and i'm vibing with it and i am enjoying it a whole lot more than anything on my switch um right now so i am an advocate of the steam deck it, i have i have been converted to to the steam and I actually think this is a good segue to ask Scott about Steam. <laughs> Scott, you have some have, thoughts about Steam. I have officially bought my first Steam game ever. Yes. What did you Doki buy? Doki does not count. Doki Doki was free. But, um, and I guess this is going to be a quick little segue into another topic I have real quick. But I bought a certain game called Dave the Diver for two <laughs> reasons. <laughs> yes! Two reasons. The first one is apparently people can't gift you games on Steam unless you go and buy something first, which I think is kind of shitty. Well, it but, has uh, to verify your wallet. It's verifying your wallet. So, yeah. like, you can't yeah. even add, like, you have to add funds first. And, th like, I think it's like five bucks. Yeah. And then you have to do something. Yeah. So, Chrome reached out to me and it's just like, what's your username? And, like, I said, oh, it's this. You're not showing up, which apparently I didn't have my profile fully set up. Even after I did that, it's like, oh, yeah, I can't gift you anything. And so I did all the research into it. I'm like, ah, oh, I have to buy something to get something for free? This is in America. But anyway, <laughs> that's part one. That's part one. I, I, I got, had to get something so I can go and accept my uh, free gift because, you know, I'm so entitled. But you know what the other reason is why I got it? A little shout out to my man over here, Bauer Tendo. The other day during my lunch, I was doing a little walk around downtown. And I thought, you know what? I've watched some videos. And I realized I haven't watched his video game reviews on his YouTube channel. So I watched it for Dredge. Excellent review. I especially appreciated the end where you um, threw some shade at Elden Ring and their uh, bullshit with uh, <laughs> making you play the game to get multiple endings. And then I watched his Dave the Diver review. And you know what? I was like, you know what? All right. I think I'll check this out. And as far as I know, it's only available on the Switch Insane. and Steam right now. And I think we already established like what my interest level currently is in Switch. So I thought, you know what? Let's take the dive. No, no, no pun intended on that one. There was a pun intended. No, pun intended. Don't Maybe a little bit you of a intended that slight, pun slight pun. And so, yes, now I'm up to three games on Steam. Actually, technically, it's like 15 because I bought a hum Humble Bundle. But, you know. You, you got Dark Tide on there. Yeah, that's one of your three, right? And now, yep, now, now there's Dark Tide on there. So there we go. I'm a... Uh, I'm moving on up. I don't know. Maybe by this time next year, I will be part of the Steam Deck bandwagon. It's, it's getting me, man. Like, it's just so convenient. The Literally, the only reason I don't play PC games that often is because I work behind a computer all day. And you want to get out wanna, of this. I I'm want to get way. out. Like, this room I am in is where I do my work. There's a work computer behind me. This computer is the phone computer where I do all my streaming. So I work, I stream, and when I'm not doing that, I'm like, I don't want to be in this room anymore. I want to go sit next to my wife. And that's where the Steam Deck is really, really chipping away at my like, oh man, am I a Steam guy now? Yeah, to be honest, and I'm not going to do any pimping out for them because they don't deserve it and they're not paying me money currently, but my work sells Steam Deck repair parts. And they sell repair parts for a whole variety of electronics, but most of them are kind of like, Either like they took broken devices and they took like the good parts of it, or I'm not going to say knockoffs, but basically like recreations of the repair parts, like iPhone 13 screens, not really from the Apple manufacturers, but you know, pretty good quality, similar devices. Valve is very repair friendly. We sell a lot of Steam Deck repair parts, fans, joysticks, memory upgrades. And this is all coming from actual Valve, or at least their suppliers. Like, we have an actual contract with Valve. We're getting their official, like, real, real stuff. And because they're all in on, yeah, we don't want you to have to buy the Steam Deck 2 next year. We want you to just be able to go and keep your Steam Deck. And 
keep it for a very, very long time, which makes sense with their business model because they care more about you buying stuff off Steam. And if you're buying it on a PC or the Steam Deck, whatever, you're, they're making money. So it makes a lot of sense that they are more comfortable with uh, having you use the same Steam Deck forever and ever. But still, you got to give the devil their due. Like, they are a very, very pro-consumer company, at least in that regard. So kudos to you, Val. I'm just right, happy that you're, you got Save the Diver. That makes that makes me so happy. It's such a good game. It's so good. I'm excited to try it, too. I mean, I am very, very overwhelmed with things to do currently. But I, I when I get to it, I am excited to try it out. I love his faces so much. I love his it is, faces. It is, not, it is on my wish list. I will eventually get to that game itself. And it, it's funny. Uh, we made some short points of things that we might individually want to talk about. One of Mike's is Dave the Diver more. It says more, I, I guess we I do not care. You know what? Yeah. You know what? That's that's start. That's let's go. Good Dave enough the, segue. Dave the diver. Okay. So updates here. Okay. Because I can't stop playing the game. There's just I, I. There's a Pokemon aspect where literally you meet like a forty year old dude who's dressed up like Ash Ketchum, and he walks up and he goes choo choo, and I'm like, oh my god, this is ridiculous, and I love it. And it's it's catching fish. You get cards for catching fish, and fighting bosses. Uh. There are literal this. This just pushed it even over. I sent it to you in the Discord. There are damn Metal Gear Solid references in this game, and I am playing a sneaking part in the game. I love this game so much. There's been a Phoenix Wright section where it was like the first person. Uh, you don't really do it much with it, but it's like nods to these other games. It is such a delightful game. It is so fun. It is so colorful. The animations are great. The music is great. The gameplay is addicting. What like when I saw this game popping up in the conversation of like one of the better games of 2023, I was like, "What the hell are you talking about? I never even heard of this game." And then I finally played it, and I get it now. I get it. Everybody should play Dave the Diver. I don't care what platform. Everybody should play Dave the Diver. It's so good. It's I will get to it. I, I will get to it. I I want to talk about this. Is really, the last thing I personally want to talk about. I want to talk about Undertale. I beat the game. That was quotation quotation marks. If you can't hear that in podcast land, I beat the game, which I have learned retroactively. My steam my stream chat was just like, yeah, Matt, that's what we wanted to do. That is the neutral ending. Now, because I did the pacifist route, you can see all the pacifist stuff. I was like. Oh, that's how this works? Okay, whatever. So I beat the game, and one, the final boss, I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys. I'm just going to say I did not expect any of what happened. It was so weird, and there are elements, like, it's funny because Scott mentioned in Last of Us how, like, it had that, like, minute, like, black screen to transition to fall. I'm not going to spoil anything, but that kind of happened with this game where purposely it does something that I wasn't expecting multiple times, and it was just a phenomenal experience. But leading up into that, and we chatted about this a little bit last week, uh, kind of like who our favorite characters are, things like that. Um, I might have to change mine to Metaton. Yeah. Because, oh my gosh. the Where the fight goes at the, the last encounter with him <laughs> is like... The best music in the game, I think that is the best music in the game. And the fight was just so unique and fun and funny. And doing that like while on uh, Twitch with people like watching and stuff was like really, really chaotic and fun. Uh, what a great character. Undertale is superb. That is a game Mike is preaching the gospel that is Dave the Diver. I feel they would feel the same, I do, about Undertale. If you have not played Undertale, you should. It's on Steam. Steam. It's on the Switch. It's on, might even be on console. I don't even know. Undertale is a must-play game for just how unique and fun and charming and emotional it is. I haven't even hit like. There's. I still have more oh. of the game. I'm so excited. Yeah, I. You got. You got loved. some some good stuff coming up here. Ugh. I absolutely loved Undertale. This game is is perfect. It is a perfect thing. And just one little closing thought on that one. I think Metaton's my favorite character, but I love like all the characters. Um, it is a bit challenging for those that stream. If you stream a game that you're very, very late to, even if you put the no spoilers tag on like your Twitch and stuff like that, people want to tell you everything about the game. So anytime someone new came into the chat, and I got a lot of new folks here because everyone loves Undertale, 
I'm like, hi, welcome to the stream. Don't tell me anything. <laughs> like I have to tell them that because they're just so excited. Like someone shows them like, hey, did he do this going into it? Did he do that? And I'm and my chat mods are like, he knows nothing. Just let him do it, man. Just just let him play the game and we'll see what happens. So kudos to to my mods on Twitch, uh, Pat, my wife in particular, um, for, for making sure I wasn't spoiled with a lot of stuff. But that game, superb. I'll be playing it on Tuesday, uh, this upcoming Tuesday. So the day after this drops, I will be streaming it again to hopefully completion of the pacifist run. I yeah, I think it. it's real. I think it's realistic, but real quick. Oh, okay. Mike, you say a bit, and then I have a question yeah. after that. I, I have a question, too. Have you listened to the entire entire soundtrack of Undertale? Kind of like what you did with I be I believe I did, just because I put Toby Fox's stuff on while I was working one day and just let it go. Did you? Do you remember seeing a song called Hopes and Dreams? I didn't look at any of the names. I was just okay. listening. Because the, 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 the boss whatever you want to call them, the final battle. Yeah. That song kicks in, Hopes and Dreams. It's going to melt your face off. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's going to melt it right off. So I, I wanted to see if you had heard it before because it kind of takes away – because part of why it's so good is what you're doing in the game. Yes. So. I will have to – that final boss fight in that game, there has been few gaming moments that have got me as emotional – as that final boss fight. And I don't want to give any spoilers. All I will say is I didn't even necessarily want to win. I mean, I wanted to win, but I yeah. didn't want to win. I, I, you'll, 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 you'll see when you get there, but I'm very excited to hear next week's Matt's thoughts on the ending of that game. But quick question. Have you had any difficulty of any of the bosses so far? And if so, what was the most difficult one? Cause I can um, tell you mine real quick. It was the spire lady. Oh yeah, my god, that, that spire that lady killed me. Literally, she killed me multiple times. The, multiple, I, lots of times. I did die to that one several times. The, the real thing that got me was the bit where she sends the pet after you. I could not get through that without taking yeah. like any damage. So that was a bit rough. Yes, I died multiple times on that one. I did die on Metaton a couple of times, but that was just more learning what like the stuff does. And I was just so hyped with the music and how funny it was and my chat. So I was a little distracted. And then the 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 boss boss, if you will, at the end of what I did um, was a bit of a challenge as well, um, mainly because I had like no healing items. So I was spamming the dog residue until it gave me dog <laughs> salad. <laughs> so I just kept doing that sister. I would have some healing items. So we took like, hang on guys, I need to get some healing. Um, but the spider was definitely a challenge. I think where I died the most, oh gosh, it's, I can't tell if it was the spider lady, the final You're boss. You're talking about Muffet, or right? Metaton. Or whatever. Yeah, Muffet. Muffet, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I would You know it's agree. possible to get out of that? You know it's possible to get out of that fight? With, with money, right? Yeah, at the very beginning, if you bought stuff from the bake sale with the spiders, then she just like lets you through. Well, I did do that, but I think you have to buy um, no a certain amount, to... don't you? I believe so. Yeah, you at, have to at buy the a certain end, amount. Yeah. She was like, "Oh, wait, you did buy something. You still have to survive to that point." And there's also a key item you get early in the game that I unintentionally used that would have made the final final fight easier. I found out. I was like, "Oh, that sucks," but now I know if I ever play it again. Great game, though. Oh my gosh. I loved it. I loved it. I don't think it's possible to lose the final, final fight. You actually lost the final, final fight? Well, yeah, you die, and then you just reload. Yeah, well, no. I mean, you have to die, but that's part of the fight is you have sorry, to die. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Uh, the, the fight leading into it. There, there's a fight okay, leading into that one, it. Okay, that one is hard, too. Okay, yeah, I know with, what you're talking about. With no spoilers. About. So the final, final fight, actually, I won't talk about it. It's Anywho, good. yes, there... There were some challenges, but there was fun. It's all doable. It's not like hard, hard. It's just like, oh, okay, I kind of get it type deal. Great game. Perfect game. Loved it. Undertale. That is Matt's gaming thoughts for today, uh, January 17th. I think that's a great place right there. That's a good segue to get into one of our favorite, one of our favorite topics on the Buds Busting Balls. <laughs> Matt. That's right, the Sky Porter Potty rant. Oh, oh wait, sorry. Yeah, it, it, Matt, you guys have a different. I gotta, segment. I gotta ask. What's your favorite? Yeah. What's your favorite part of the Buds Bust and Balls podcast? I think my favorite part, everyone's favorite part, is the brand. The brand. The brand 
of the Buds Busting Balls podcast. That is my favorite part. It should be your favorite part too. This is the part where we tell you how great we are, how handsome we are, how we have the best facial hair in all of podcast land. I say that because you can't see our camera right now. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you. We love us. You love us. You love the brand. You should tell everyone and their mother and their father and their stepsister, not their stepbrother. That guy smells like a turd. About the Buds Busting Balls podcast. You can watch it and listen to it on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, a whole bunch of things that I don't remember. Uh, why are you not sharing this with everyone? Why? We're great. And if you and do want to see us, we got shorts going up all the time now. It's great. We could hear about Marvel Snap. You could hear about Matt's left testicle. You could hear about <laughs> our favorite Undertale characters. I mean, the list goes on and on, and you get to see our faces again. It's it's a win win for everybody. Right? The brand. True. The Buds Bust and Balls podcast. Now, I'd say this is probably our third favorite segment, right? Behind one other special one we'll get to. It's not your time, Scott. Shut up. It's not your time. Oh, fine. Fine. Right now, it is time for the viewer question. Ooh. I heard you had a question. So many questions. Why don't you ask your question and the buds will bust an answer for you. So today's question is addressed to everyone, all of the buds. And I forgot this, to say who wrote it. It was a Sura, A-S-U-R-A. Sura. That's okay. who asked the question. Sorry, I didn't right. write it. All right. So this is a long one, kind of like Chrome's. It's kind of funny. What do you think about the game called Pal World that is an open world game that's PvE and PvP but has animals that you can catch like Pokemon or defeat them with guns or cook them or make them work for you or you can also take them to battle with you and equip them with weapons. So first of all, number one. First of all, Holy what Batman run-on. run-on sentence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the, be- the biggest run-on sentence ever. Kudos to you for that one. Number two. What a loaded question there. And number three. All I got to say is Pokemon with Pokemon and guns. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but you, you kind of got me on that. But also you kind of took me away with you cook them. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Have have either of you seen the trailer for this? I have not. No, I've only heard okay. about it. Okay, I'm gonna go After watch the this, trailer. Go, go watch the trailer for this. Um, it looks like a Pokemon game with like Pokemon creatures that you can give them guns to fight other Pokemon like trainers and and creatures. And then there's like scenes and stuff that imply like. There's like a sweatshop of Pokemon that you can maybe save them from. And uh, apparently you can also kill them and eat them. So it's like, hey, what if these are real animals? And if they are, then terrible things can happen. You can train them to be good. You can train them to be bad. You give them guns too? So it looks like it. The trailer looks like you like, hey, here's this Pikachu. It now has a machine gun. Like, it looks bonkers. Here's my problem with the game is... The, I mean, it's very obvious it's a Pokemon ripoff. So many of the designs in there, they're not even a ripoff. They're like the actual Pokemon design. And I don't know how they have not been sued by Nintendo Game Freak or, over this, or the company. Po- Pokemon company. About. No, like literally, there is so many of the designs. It's like, you didn't even change anything about that. That's like the, a, the, the name is like, not Pikachu, not Lapras. Just, I don't know. It's just like, oh maybe one thing was like I'm a parody. It too. It yeah. <laughs> It's that, not a parody. It's like straight up ripping off the uh, the actual Pokemon. Holy crap. There's the monkey one. Yeah. 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 You, guys, you guys watch this. I'll, I'll talk as you guys watch okay. and absorb this because I saw this earlier and I'm just like, this is real. This is a but, real thing. Well, what I will leave you all with on this is uh, <coughs> it's on Game Pass. Oh, that's all you need. <laughs> well, I'll be, I'll be playing Game it. Game Pass plug. Game Pass plug for tonight. All right, you guys can report back to me if it's 
God. So uh, that's our thoughts. It's new to them, but it looks bonkers. I feel it's going to be bad. If I'm being honest with you, but uh, maybe it's what a good a... bad. Maybe it'll be an entertaining bad. Like I didn't want to pay it, money for it. it. Has I'll to play be... it on Game Pass. Bad. It, it has to be tongue in cheek. It has to be. I I, I hope so. I I really do. Um. Hey, Scott. Now that we've talked about Pokemon, I got a question for you. Uh, do you have a rant for us tonight? Oh, do I have a rant for you, ladies and gentlemen? Get ready to catch them all, cause you're gonna get your next Scott a Porty Potty rant. Boom. Look over there, he just doesn't care. He's going off on a crowd of people, throwing words in the air like he just don't care. He's yelling at all of a sheeple. really grinds my gear potty maniacs out there you want to hear what really really gets me steaming fat people but wait you may say to yourself but scott you said way back then not to fat shame people and i 100 percent agree but here's my deal fat people who are entitled that's right i am going there i'm talking about you fat guy in the electric cart zooming everywhere making me jump out of the way for my life hoping that you don't run me down cold blood and you say oh well i deserve special treatment because this is a disability oh it is now is it a disability that you're fat is a w if somebody's a double amputee they can't get the ability to walk again by stop eating sticks of butter you can so what is the disability and what isn't fat boy yeah that's right i went there all right you know, you call it like a disease, a disability. I call it lazy butt disease. That's right. You hop off that electric cart, jump on that treadmill, and I ain't giving you no special treatment. That's right. You will not run me down. And you may say, Scott, this is such a fring- fringe case. Is it now? When's the last time you've been to a Walmart? That place is like Mad Max Thunderdome in there, all right? It is, Yeah. So you know what? I'm on to you guys. I will not go and cast the first stone, but you guys do not go and cast the first tire against me. There we go. Thank you, and God bless America. All right, everybody. Walmart, Scott Stevens. Walmart is Thunderdome. <laughs> That's my favorite part of that, that whole thing. Walmart is Thunderdome. Also, I like that you said that they zoom around. Do they really zoom around? On the little well, cards. You know, on their no. cards, do they really zoom around? Really? Some of them zoom around. So I, I went to a wrestling show this past Saturday. There was like this fat dude. He was brown, brown. Okay, okay. And like I, I got near the like barricade to the ring and he tried to run me over. He's just like pushing against my heels and he's thinking that I'm going to back down and jump out of the way so he can cut in front of me. His daughter actually started yelling at me and it's like, you need to get out of his way. He wants to take a picture. And I just kind of gave her like, a, oh, do I look? And, uh, Funny story, that's actually when uh, Dave Finley, like, pushed me to the side, and I actually thought he was, like, with the fat guy's family, and he was trying to start stuff. And that's why I was kind of like, like, all right, time to start this fight. It's going down, and then I saw the dude was a foot taller than me, and Jack, and kind of backed down from there. But uh, story for Scott, another day. Are you, are you telling me that you were ready to fight a girl? I No, <laughs> no was, I, I was a dude. I Because I was looking at the girl. I was looking at the girl, and somebody from the other side of me pushed me. And so I thought it was like somebody who was part of the, I'm not, I'm a gentleman. I will make fun of people being fat, but I won't go and start beat up a girl. I have my limits. I have my boundaries. (laughs) We're going to need to see the limit list at some point of how far Scott will will, go when it comes to physically harming people. I'll give you the list of depravity and lines not crossed. Okay. I'll I'll give that to you. you, And then we'll, okay. Then we'll have this Scott hates Scott. Yeah, we'll talk about this again. Anywho, Scott hates fat people, but uh, if you subscribe to the podcast, uh-huh. you're you're gonna pass. Um, fat people on electric carts, please be specific. okay. Specifically, he he only hates those that try to run him over. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So we have clarified: only people that have physically tried to assault Scott that just happen to be on the larger side. So it's really it's really not fat people. It's cart people. Is what what that rant was really about. It's cart. Yeah, people. we might need it. I need to correct it. People that ride think carts, of like carts at Disneyland or strollers at Disneyland. Oh yeah, them strollers. Yeah, mm. so that was really a cart rant. 
Sorry, we're kind of backtracking here a little bit, so we, we don't. <laughs> They're trying to do damage control. Shaming. They're super, trying to do super. damage control on this one. All right, they yeah, don't want yeah, us being canceled. Super Scotty Porter Potty Cart. That's all our right. video game that we're going to make everybody. Wow. Stop recording. Stop recording. Okay. <laughs> Dub this over. Dub this over. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll okay. Let's I'm going to keep recording. I'm just full. full <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. You know what really grinds my gears? People on electric carts who happen to be fat. Okay. Sorry. I can't do it. <laughs> well, you got, you, you got, you got an extra bonus. <laughs> yep. There you go. Okay. Redacted. Retractions and redactions, whatever. All right. That being said, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening to us ramble about things that we love, things that we hate, things that we're indifferent on. Uh, tell us your thoughts. Come yell at us in the comments. Come yell at us uh, all over the place. If, if you're listening to us, come yell at us on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, come yell at us on other platforms or on Twitter. So you can catch uh, all of us here. So celiac underscore Matt is on Twitch Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, various other days, playing all sorts of stuff. Scott is all around town. He's he's in our Discord. He's he's always he's always there. He's always on the fringe. So you, he's never too far away. If you if you say his name, he'll show up somehow. I don't know how, but he will. And you can catch me on Twitch Mondays, Tuesdays, whenever I don't have family stuff ha happening, of course. Um, and you can catch YouTube videos if you're watching on YouTube. Awesome. If you're listening, awesome. We appreciate you guys. And until next time, bye.